Yasin, O perfect man. With the name of Allah, the most gracious, the ever merciful. Yasin, O perfect man, Muhammad. I call to witness the perfect Quran, full of convincing proofs and wisdom. That you are indeed one of the messengers, standing on the right and straight path. This Quran is a great revelation sent by the Almighty and the ever merciful God, so that you may warn the people who are ignorant because their forefathers have not been warned for a long time. Surely, most of them merit the sentence of our punishment, for they would not believe. Surely we have put shackles of customs and prejudices round their necks, and they are reaching right up to their chins, so that they have become stiff-necked due to their pride and false notions of superiority. And we have placed barriers of their stubbornness, rendering them unable to look forward to the bright future of Islam and rise to eminence by accepting it in front of them and barriers of their prejudices behind them, thus rendering them unable to look back at the doom of those who rejected the truth in the past. Thus we have kept them behind the veil, so that they cannot see, so have become totally devoid of spiritual light. And it is all the same to them whether you warn them or do not warn them. They will not believe for they have deliberately shut their eyes and ears to the truth. You can warn only those who would follow the reminder, the Qur'an, and are full of reverential awe of the most gracious God in the heart of their hearts. Therefore, proclaim to them the glad tidings of protection from the evil consequences of sins and an honorable provision from us. Surely it is we alone who raise the dead to life, and we shall preserve their noble deeds, which they send forward, and their prince of virtue and knowledge which they leave behind for others to emulate. Everything we have comprehensively preserved in a clear record, and set forth to them, for their good, a parable of a people of the town, when the messengers of God came to them. At first we sent to them two messengers, Moses and Jesus, but they cried lies to them. Then we strengthened our apostles with a third, the prophet Muhammad, by fulfilling in his person their prophecies about his advent. So they said, as a general message to the people, We have been sent to you as messengers by God. They, the contemporaries of the messengers, gave a general reply. You are only human beings like ourselves. The most gracious God has revealed nothing to you. You are simply telling lies. They said, Our Lord knows that we have been, of course, sent to you, and our duty is only to convey the message in clear terms. They the people of the town said, We augur ill from you, for we were seized with one calamity or the other after your advent. If you do not give it your preaching over, we will certainly excommunicate you, and a painful punishment shall befall you at our hands. They said, Your ills are of your own making. Do you say all this because you have been admonished? Nay, but the real thing is you are a pack of transgressors. Now there came a man running from the farthest end of the town. He said, O oh my people, follow the messengers. Follow those who ask no reward from you and who are following the right path. What reason have I not to worship him who has created me, and to whom you all shall be brought back? Shall I take apart from him others as gods, whose intercession, if the most gracious God should decide to do me some harm, 
will be of no avail to me, nor will they be able even to rescue me from that harm? Surely, in case I do anything of the kind, I should be falling into a clear error. I have believed in your true Lord, therefore listen to me. It was said to him by God, Enter the paradise while you are still living. He said, Oh, would that my people knew. For what reason has my Lord granted me protection from pitfalls in this life and included me among the honored servants of his? We sent no contingent of force from heaven against his people to destroy them. After that he has believed, nor do we ever command any of such things. It was just a single blast, and behold, they were all extinct like a spark of fire extinguished. Alas for my servants, not a single messenger comes to reform them, but they treat him lightly. Have they not seen how many generations we have ruined before them, and that those generations never come back to them after their ruination? Indeed. They, one and all, shall most certainly be brought before us. The dead earth which we bring to life, and from which we bring forth a large variety of grains, of which they eat, is an important sign for them. And we have made to grow thereon the earth, gardens of date palms and vines, and we have caused springs to gush forth from it, so that they may enjoy its fruit, and enjoy that which their hands have worked for. Will they then render us no thanks, and follow our guidance? Glory be to him who has created pairs of all type, of the thing that the earth grows, and of their own species, and of the things yet unknown to them. The night from which we strip off the last vestige of the day, so that afterwards they are left in pitch darkness, is a great sign for them. And the sun is moving on its ordained course towards the goal determined for it. That is the determining of the Almighty, the possessor of perfect knowledge. And think over the phases of the moon. We have determined its various mansions, so that after traversing these mansions, it returns to the stage when it appears like an old dry twig of a palm tree. It is not given to the sun to attain to the purpose ordained for the moon, nor is it given to the night to outstrip the day. All of these luminaries go on floating smoothly in an orbit of their own. And it is a sign for these people that we carry their children in the fully laden ships. And we will make for them other means of transport, such things as they will board. If we so willed, we would drown them. Then they would have no one to succor them, nor would they be rescued. It is only through mercy from us that we save them and let them have an enjoyment of worldly gains for a while. And when it is said to them, Guard yourself against that punishment which is impending before you, and that which is behind you, and may befall you as a consequence of your evil past, so that you may be shown mercy, they turn away. There never comes to them a message from the messages of their Lord, but they always turn away from it. And when it is said to them, Spend out of that which Allah has provided for you, those who disbelieve say to those who believe, Shall we feed those whom if Allah so will, he could feed? You are only steeped in obvious error. They also say, Tell us if indeed you are truthful, when this warning about punishment shall come to pass. They are thus only waiting for one sudden onslaught of calamity, which will overtake them while they are yet disputing about it among themselves. 
and so sudden will be their end, that they will not be able to leave instructions about their affairs, nor to their own people will they return. And the trumpet shall be blown, and behold, rising from their graves they will hasten on to their Lord. They will say to one another, O oh, woe be on us! Who has aroused us from our sleeping place? This is the same thing as the most gracious God had promised, and the messengers of God did indeed speak the truth, will be the reply they receive. It will only be a single blast, and behold, they shall all be brought before us. So on this day no injustice whatsoever shall be done to any soul. You shall reap the fruit of your deeds. On this day the owners of paradise will be occupied in their pursuits, rejoicing. They and their companions will be in pleasant shades, reclining on raised couches, Therein they shall have fruits, and they will have all that they ask for. Peace be upon you shall be the word of greeting to them from the ever-merciful Lord. And it will be said to the sinners, O guilty ones, remain apart as distinguished from the righteous this day. O children of Adam, did I not enjoin on you never to worship Satan? For he is to you an enemy severing your ties with me? And did I not charge you to worship me? For this is the straight and right path? Yet he, Satan, has certainly led astray a number of people from among you. Why do you not even then make use of your understanding so as to rectify your error? This is the Gehenna you were warned against. Enter it this day because of your disbelief. On that day we shall seal the mouths of these disbelievers. Their hands will speak to us about the actions they wrought, and their feet shall bear witness to all their sinful doings. If we had so willed, we could certainly have deprived these disbelievers of their eyesight so that they would have gone ahead on their path unseeing. But how should they find the path now in this state of their blindness? If we had so willed, we could have certainly destroyed them where they were so that they would not be able to move forward nor turn back. We reverse the mechanism of the person to whom we grant extraordinary long life by making the state of his constitution weak. Do they not even then make use of their understanding? We have not taught him, the Prophet Muhammad, the art of composing verses, nor does it become him to be a poet. This Qur'an is but a means to attain to eminence. A book that is widely read and tells the right from the wrong. It has been revealed so that he, the prophet, may warn those who are still somewhat spiritually alive and so capable of receiving and responding to the call of truth and that the verdict of condemnation be justified against the disbelievers. Do they not see? that among the things that we have made with our power are the cattle which we have created for them and of which they are masters now? And we have subdued these cattle for their use and benefit so that some of them serve as their riding beast and through others they obtain their food. They have many other uses in them. They provide them with the drinks of various kinds Will they still give us no thanks? In spite of all this, they worship other gods apart from Allah falsely that they may find some help through them. These false gods are not capable of helping them. On the contrary, these gods will turn out for them to be a host of rebels 
brought before the Almighty to receive their due punishment. And do not let their words cause you grief. Verily, we know what they conceal and what they profess, and they will be paid back in their own coins. Has not a human being seen how we have created him out of a very insignificant sperm drop? Yet behold, he is an open adversary to us. And he coins strange things about us and forgets his own creation. He says, Who will quicken the dead bones to life when they are decayed? Say, He who evolved them the first time will again raise them to life. He is fully conversant with all types and methods of creation. It is he who produces fire for you out of the green tree, that you kindle another fire from it. Even so, new faith is kindled when the spiritually weak come in contact with the divine reformer. Has he who has created the heavens and the earth not the power of creating other people like them? Why not? He is the supreme creator and possessor of all knowledge. Verily his command, when he intends to evolve a thing, is only that he says to it, Be, and it comes into being at proper time. Therefore glory be to him in whose hand lies the perfect control of everything, and towards whom you shall be made to return.